Okay, so I'm not sure if you guys heard about this, but I think this is possibly some of the biggest news in recent memory when it comes especially to like social media and the internet because this hearing is kind of like one of the first steps in a massive, I guess, investigation into companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Apple. Basically, most of the bigger tech giants in Silicon Valley, you know, the ones that kind of rule a lot of our lives in all reality. So there's been a lot of whispering on Capitol Hill about whether or not that these companies should face either tighter regulations on a lot of what they do, possibly face antitrust law, or in some cases maybe even be broken up to prevent or deter monopolization of markets and industries. So the four CEOs that basically had to face uh, the Congress today was Google CEO Sundar Pakai, uh, Facebook CEO and founder Mark Zuckerberg, Apple CEO Tim Cook, and of course Amazon founder and CEO Jeff Bezos. Now, the last time something like this happened was with Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, okay? And it went completely terribly. I mean, let's be honest. The people who sit on Congress in the House of Representatives or in the Senate, they have absolutely no idea about technology. For the most part, they're older people, okay? They're, what, you know, 50, 60, 70, maybe even 80. They don't use technology often enough to really understand the gravity of their situation that they're trying to talk about. They don't really understand how most of this technology fundamentally works. But yet, these are the people that Americans are entrusting to keep us safe from, okay? we These are the people who are doing the hearing to find out whether or not they should take action against these companies on behalf of us. I think that that's a very scary opportunity. I think that's a very scary situation. So let me go ahead and give you an example of why these four companies in particular are a problem, okay? You wanna use the internet. The most popular browser is Google. And on top of that, you, you go on Google and you search up YouTube to watch this video. You're all using it right now. Google also owns that. But hey, let's say you want to go do some online shopping. Your first stop, most likely, Amazon. Because in reality, it's the biggest and best marketplace on the internet. Maybe you want to go watch someone live stream on Twitch. Guess what? That's also owned by Amazon. Hey, maybe you look down at your phone, though. Chances are, you might have an iPhone. Or maybe even a phone created and manufactured by a company like Google like the, what is it, the Google Pixel? And then, hey, you want to go on social media? Guess what? You go log into your Facebook account. Or or maybe you get on Instagram or WhatsApp, which are also owned by Facebook. And maybe you decide uh, you, you want to have, you want to know the weather tomorrow. So you, you yell out, hey, Google Home or hey, Alexa, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? Guess which companies own those? These companies, every single day, get more and more power over the American lifestyle, over the Western lifestyle, and in reality, over the world. They're controlling a vast amount of power in the online landscape, which in reality is becoming normalized more and more in our planet's history, I guess, every single day. More and more people are online every year. Developing countries are, are getting more people online than ever. And these companies are being fueled by that growth. They're being fueled by the fact that they got into the whole situation a little bit earlier, got a little bit of money, and then now they can use that to expand their resources. That's in reality how a lot of business works, but at a certain point, it becomes kind of problematic, especially when these four companies have this much power over your life to where they've integrated products into your home. They give, they deliver goods to your door. They make your phone. They make your TV. They make the services that you watch on your TV. For shit like Amazon, they literally even sell things like batteries, keyboards, mice, everyday things for your home, okay? It's getting to the point where more and more things in your life are being controlled by these four companies alone than any other company on the planet. And a lot of them have been caught doing some shady shit. When it comes down to Google, they were literally making a browser to go to the Chinese government, essentially, to censor anything they wanted, restricting the freedom of information to Chinese citizens for profit. They've been caught in so many data scandals that I couldn't name them if I had four years, okay? Facebook, God, oh, Facebook. If they're not giving you misinformation at every single turn, politically, economically, anything, your data is being scalped down to the last possible bit so Mark Zuckerberg can use that in any way that he wants. And then Apple, of course, they're taking over the smartphone industry. A lot of people have iPhones, right? They're, they're one of the biggest phone manufacturers on the planet. And they make computers, TVs, they make watches, everything, okay? And you, you think that Apple is above doing anything shady? Until they, you know, they slow down the processing power of your phone to the point that it's basically a fucking snail, so you're forced into buying a $1,400 smartphone every single year because you don't want to get rid of the logo, you know what I'm saying? And Amazon, shit, Amazon's built into your TV, into your phone, they've got home assistants. 
A lot of people do their shopping through Amazon. Shit, they even deliver groceries at this point, man. It, it isn't, it, it's gone beyond the point of just, hey, I want to get a book from Amazon. Hey, I want to get a new monitor from Amazon. You can literally get your fucking groceries delivered to your front door through Amazon in a few hours. That's insane, okay? That's how much power these companies have. And that's the point of this hearing. They're trying to figure out whether or not something should be done to break them down. Now, it's more or less a virtual testimony and everything here. And, of course, they had to raise their hand to tell the truth. Like, they're they're under oath at this point when they're facing Congress like this. But Apple was basically being pressed because a lot of what they do is seen as predatory. Because, obviously, Apple's App Store kind of dictates a lot of the iPhone economy, I guess. Because you can't really use Google Play or anything on your iPhone to download apps from a third party like that. You have to download apps through the App Store. So, Am or not Amazon, Apple has the ability, in, in theory, to basically chokehold what's on the App Store, to chokehold the creators of applications. So basically, CEO Tim Cook had to reject allegations that the App Store rules for developers are actually being enforced arbitrarily in order to benefit their company's self-interest, and they basically now have to argue that the company has to compete with rivals to interest developers now to build apps for the iPhone and whatnot. So, he made the claim that the majority of apps sold through the App Store, up to 84%, don't pay any fees. And the, remi the remaining apps, that, what, 16%, they only pay maybe a 30% or 15% commission, depending. So yeah, Apple has been accused of running their app store basically almost like a mafia at this point. Like, hey, you want to get your app onto the store? You better act correctly. You better do this right. That's been an accusation they faced for a long time, and it's being denied, but I mean, who really knows? We'll, we'll see if that's the case, and if they are trying to kind of press, uh, press Apple onto everything there. So Mark Zuckerberg was pressed pretty hard and grilled over a, a Donald Trump Jr. call, okay? So basically, Mark Zuckerberg was questioned by a House Republican over a recent content moderation issue that involved Donald Trump Jr., who is obviously the president's son of the United States, uh, with Twitter. So basically, and this just shows the fucking inept behavior of the people asking this question. They asked Mark Zuckerberg about why Donald Trump Jr. was taken off Twitter. And he was taken off Twitter because he was promoting, because he was basically promoting, I guess, the efficiency of hydroxychloroquine, okay? I think that's how you say it, which is like a medicine that a lot of people are, are hyping up against COVID or whatever. And so they asked Mark Zuckerberg why that happened. Keep in mind, Mark Zuckerberg has nothing to do with Twitter. That's not his platform. They literally asked the CEO of a company, hey, why did this other company do that? I... I, I can't make that up. So Zuckerberg got off easy, and he basically just said, you know, I can't really speak on what happens on Twitter, but I can to what happens on Facebook. And he said that Facebook would take down a claim that any proven cure for COVID exists when there is none, but would allow the social platform uh, to give leeway on discussion about drug trials and what people think about a treatment's prospects. He then said that he thinks he's distinguished themselves as one of the companies that defends free expression the most, which, Mark, you should do stand-up, guy. That... <laughs> Okay. Google basically had to defend themselves from the allegations that they steal content from other websites and companies, and even the fact that they might even steer their users to their own products and their own websites rather than sources on other parts of the internet. Now, apparently there was an investigation by the markup that showed that Google has devoted more space on the first page of search results to their own products, which obviously will earn the company more revenue and more clicks. And the FTC did an investigation into Google in the early 2010s that showed that Google scraped content from other websites like Yelp and TripAdvisor, which actually led to the company agreeing to allow other companies to opt out of having content scraped through 2017. And the craziest thing here, Jeff Bezos in two hours wasn't even asked a single question. You know, potentially the most powerful company there, maybe besides like Google, wasn't asked a single question about any of this, man. This looks like an absolute failure, okay? In reality, this could be used as a productive discussion about whether or not these companies are dominating our lives too much and whether or not something should be done. But the people we elected to represent have completely failed to hold any of them accountable or to find out really anything. It's sad, man. It really is. It's crazy to watch these old geezers get up there and just fucking flounder in front of these guys. And these guys are all smart fellas, right? Mark Zuckerberg is a genius. Sundar Pichai is a genius. Tim Cook is a genius. Jeff Bezos is a genius. They've all done very, very accomplished things. And they're all very good at what they do. You can't tell me that they can't figure out how to fucking fool this Congress. 
full of people who don't even understand the products that they're trying to talk about. Folks, something needs to be said about this. Uh, people need to pay more attention to these things because they are important. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel, follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at Subtoptimus. Make sure to check out Shop Opti down below. Thank you to my channel members. Your support helps my channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus using all four of their services and signing out.